Here's a little probability problem to work on to practice compound probability. If you'd like to take a moment to read this problem carefully, please hit the pause button and take a look at it, all right? Okay, now that you've had a chance to look at it and read it, we're going to do these four tasks, all right? I will reference the problem, but I'm going to take it off the screen now, okay? This is a problem of compound probability. That means we have two independent events, and we're asking questions about the probability of two of those events happening at the same time, okay? Question one. It says, draw an outcome grid to show what all of the possible snacking combinations are. So, along one side, and it does not matter which side you choose, we have Dr. Pepper. He has another Dr. Pepper. The problem says he has two of them. He has an orange crush and a Jones mashed potato soda. So these are the drinks. Okay, that's one side of our rectangle. Along the top, we've got the lunch meat, roast beef slab, a chicken leg, and a mystery meatball. Someone in class today asked the question, how is a chicken leg lunch meat? And the answer is, when you eat it for lunch. Not a joke, just a fact. All right, so we've got our three lunch meat choices. We've got our four drink choices, and if we fill in the grid like this, we can count the squares, and we know that we have 12 different events that could happen here. Okay, but that answers question one, which was draw the outcome grid. Question two, we want Dr. Pepper or mashed potato soda. What's the probability? So we have probability of Dr. P or mashed potato soda <clears throat> equals, we have 12 possible events. We need to figure out how many of them were going to give us a Dr. Pepper or, that's the key word here, or means we're going to do some adding. When it's probability, or means we're doing some adding, usually and is what tells you to add. But here we go. <clears throat> so Dr. Pepper answers question two, and so does Jones mashed potato soda. All of those outcomes, there are nine of them, answer this question, Dr. Pepper or mashed potato soda. That's why I used the two in there. It answers this question. I can reduce this or simplify it to three-fourths, which then if I just do this as a division problem on the calculator, right, three, hit those buttons, there's my decimal. When I multiply by 100, it gives the percent. Works that way every time. Here's the answer to question two. Move this up, I'll keep the outcome grid in the picture. Go to question three. We want Orange Crush and Roast Beef Slab. I'm going to take the addition sign out of there. Orange Crush and a Roast Beef Slab. This means we're talking about the intersection of two independent events. By independent events, I mean we have drinks here and we have snacks here. One thing does not affect the other. I'm going to use the number three up here in the outcome grid. Orange crush would happen there. Roast beef slab would happen here. Orange crush, we had a one out of four chance, right, going this way. Roast beef slab, we had a one out of three chance. There's three different lunch meats. One of them is roast beef. So 
When you have compound probability and we're asking for the intersection of two events, your key is the word and. It means multiply when we're talking about probability. And means multiply. In every other case, it means addition. We just go straight across, 1 12th. So the probability of orange crush and roast beef slab, I'm writing a probability statement here. Looks like that. Okay, make a line here so we don't get our answers confused. <clears throat> Moving on up, if I do 1 divided by 12 in the calculator, I will get this. Three repeats, and if I want to convert that to a percentage, there we go. Not a very good chance of getting orange crush and a roast beef slab. Okay, and finally, I'm just going to flip this over now. If you don't want me to, then uh, I'm sorry about that, but you could hit the pause button if you're still catching up. I'm going to flip it. The final question was, explain the difference between theoretical and experimental probability and give me an example of each. So we're going to explain and give an example. <clears throat> theoretical, what you think will happen. That's my short definition, short and simple. You could also say this is a prediction. <clears throat> the key that I use to always remember this is the TH connection. This is also the before. Lots of different ways to remember theoretical probability. Theoretical is what you think. You don't know yet. Experimental probability, that is your experience. That's the after. Something that happened. Past tense, verb. All of these things can help you remember. The main thing I look at is the first two letters right here. Make that connection. Experimental probability is the experience you had after something has happened. Okay, so example, um, I think the Ducks will beat UCLA And then the experimental would be after the game. The Ducks destroyed UCLA 60 to 7. Okay, so this is my example. <clears throat> you can have fun making up your own examples. An example of theoretical probability will always be what you think is going to happen. Call it heads or tails. I think I'm going to roll a four on this die. Any of those examples, you think. It's before, okay? And then the event happened. You did that experiment. The thing is over. That's experimental. You have your data. And guess what? We're done here. And I believe if you get tested on this subject, you will do fantastic. All right. See you later.